Yo, what's up, everybody? How you doing? We are going to take baby steps, and I literally mean baby steps, in getting to understand why our chakras aren't opening and why people are having such a difficult time opening their chakras. And in this video, we're going to use the birth of a baby to kind of explain this, not kind of explain, to explain this. And we're only going to go as far as your first three up to your fourth chakra, uh, mainly focusing on those first three from the time frame that you were born and give you a good idea of this. Now, first, I want to thank everybody for subscribing. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button right now. Hit the subscribe, become a member. Greatly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you, everybody who supports on Patreon. And this video is supported by Uncle Ren's Popcorn, the best gourmet popcorn you've ever had in your life. So order at the letter U, the letter R, the word popcorn.com. Great flavors. Uh, follow me on TikTok for Uncle Ren's Popcorn. A lot of foolishness goes on on there. But we have a great time. We have a great time. So today, we're going to talk about your chakras. And... Uh, many people struggle to understand it, and there's so much information out there that can throw you off. One of those primary pieces of information that throws people off that I've encountered recently is people thinking or being told that you can open your chakras from the top down instead of from the bottom up. We have to understand in hermetic alchemy, things at the top can affect the lower but in order for the lower to be affected, we have to open the lower. You see, the top of your chakra, your crown chakra, is the gateway to the beginning lower chakra for the next understanding, the next level of consciousness, the next dimensional um, space that you will occupy. So we can't work from the top, open the top and work down because that's on a higher plane of existence, a higher conscious level of understanding. And we are that, and that's why we have the, t the 90 degree turn in our heart, there's a half step there, and then there's another one in your third eye. Without your third eye being open, you, you can't actually get into the crown chakra. You can't get into the higher dimensional plane. You are stuck in this third dimensional idea of creation, trying to understand a fourth dimension that is abound around us but being able to move to the fifth and the sixth without first understanding the first and second and third dimensional plane that we exist on you can't do it that way and let me give you another uh, thought process as to why it doesn't work that way you see the way the universe has created us created all of us we are we are we are spiritual beings we're our soul that is having a, an experience in the body. The body didn't come into existence for the soul. It came into existence because of the soul. You see, the soul was the masculine and feminine, as the caduceus shows us, coming together in balance to create the soul. The spirit is the vibration, vibrational pattern, the frequency that the soul created in order for us to manifest in a body here on the earth. So the body is a manifestation of our higher spirit, our higher soul being able to function on this plane of existence. You see, without the body, our soul can't function on this plane of existence. It's at a higher conscious level. So while we're in this state, we can't open the crown chakra and move to that higher understanding because we're in this state we have to deal with touch with with smell with with feels with taste we have to deal with um if you draw a line on a plain piece of paper we have to deal with this. that is one dimensional now if that line which has two points on it which is zero zero points on the one dimension, now you take the one dimension and you make a square, you have two dimensional form. And then when the square becomes a cube, you have a three dimensional form. And then when the cubes all come together to form Metatron's cube, we get into a fourth dimensional uh, pattern. And, and or you can, we can discuss the Merkaba and then by the creation of your Merkaba, we get into a fourth dimensional pattern. We can't open that crown chakra. We have to deal with these base things first. This is why when the soul becomes a body, when it manifests as a baby, if you look at a baby, understand a baby, and I had this experience today, somewhat of the experience today with a young lady 
with her child that was in the store. When a baby first comes into existence, it form it, it, it works on one it, it, it works it's it's concept, it's consciousness. It's focused on one chakra. And that's your base chakra, your foundational chakra, that one that's based on survival. The color is red, right? It is your base chakra that it functions on. Its concern is survival. That's it. The baby, when first born, uh, even in conception in the womb, is not focused on love. It's not focused on higher conscious understandings. I know some of your books say if you want to know God, if you want to know the universe, then go to a young baby because they're closer to God. Because our mindset says they just came from God. No. Just came from a higher dimensional plane, yes. But because it came into this manifestation of the physical reality, all that information, all that knowledge, all that connection to those higher planes is not there. Otherwise, the small baby would already understand the complexities of this universe into a simple understanding. But the baby does not. The baby functions based on the base, its, fa its foundational chakra of just survival in this third dimensional plane. This, that's it. It wants to eat. It eats and it poops. That's all the baby does. It may giggle. People have pictures where they show a baby and I put his hand again and say, oh, the baby knows how to pray. It came out praying. Or the baby looks angry. Oh, the baby's already angry. The baby doesn't even understand at this point the concept of anger. All they know is survival. I need food. I need substance. I need liquid. I need water. That's all a baby knows, survival. And so the baby is existing on that base plane. So what does that mean for you? To open up your base chakra is you must provide a situation where your survival is taken care of. When you look at ancient civilizations, or not even ancient civilizations, you go into impoverished area where uh, resources are minimal, then the entire region, the entire apartment complex, the entire ghetto, the entire country, the entire whatever it is, is purely focused on survival. When we look back and see our ancestors who were hunters, get hunter gatherers, their entire system at that time frame was based on survival. Wherever the herds went, they went for survival. Wherever the trees and the plants grew, they went for survival. It wasn't until man started developing higher forms of trade, higher technology that allowed them to build cities, that higher consciousness began to, to grow. The higher state begin to be embodied so when and and this goes ups and up and down we see that in and there was a time when the sumerians were high there was a time when the egyptians were high and then they bottomed out there was a time where the europeans were high and they bottomed out and they get high again and you know everyone gets high up and then they bottom out it's a it's a cyclic thing just as the frequency goes up and down and recognize the foundational chakra its frequency is very rapid and fast the higher you go up on the scale, the higher the frequency is for each color. When you look at red, the, the frequency of red is very fast and high. The frequency of the next chakra, which is your pleasure chakra, is orange. It's not as fast. It doesn't have that many ups and downs as the previous chakras do, as the, as the foundational chakra. So it begins to slow down and thin out. And by the time you get to your, your, your pineal gland and your crown chakra is it's almost smooth so the highs and lows become longer but foundation is up and down so we have to satisfy our security in a relationship you have to satisfy the foundation of the relationship in order for you to move to the next plane of existence within that relationship and just think about that for a second think about that when you first start dating someone you have to develop the trust you have to develop the security of knowing that you're financially good. You have to develop that security knowing that you're emotionally good. You have to get all those in place before you move to the next level. Now, sometimes we jump ahead. Sometimes we jump ahead. But when we're looking for a serious relationship, when we want to marry someone, we have to make sure that we are trust attracted to them, financially attracted to them, 
all these things have to be there first you know shelter attracted to them we have to make sure those things are there so as a baby looks for foundation so do we have to find that foundation of security now in our lives in order for us to open that foundational chakra now the next one we will talk about our pleasure chakra when we think about it, from the baby the baby goes from making sure that they can eat and they have water to now making sure now now to having fun now to finding things that laugh you know you play with the baby and they laugh when a baby is first born i don't know if you guys had any children but when a baby is a firstborn infant, there's no laughter. They don't understand that. But as they develop, a month, two, three months later, they begin to understand pleasure. One of the, and, and the sacral chakra is also, most people just related to sex, but it's just, it's pleasure. It's pleasure. When a baby suckles, it's deriving pleasure out of the suckling as well as foundational of survival. When the baby grabs your hand, your finger, and hold on to it, it's a sense of security, but it's also the pleasure of feeling now. Now, I, this, this texture of your hand is interesting. This texture of putting my hands in my mouth is interesting. All these things are pleasurable to the baby. And, and when they find themselves in an unpleasurable situation, they crap on themselves, or things are uncomfortable or hurt, then they cry, they scream. They start to realize these things. So the next one is understanding that pleasure in order to keep it in a healthy balance. You know, the, the child doesn't look at suckling his mother's breast as something sexual. It's, it's food and it's comforting. It's enjoyable. You know, the taste becomes is, is good for them. We misconstrue it when we take pleasure out of its place. There's nothing wrong with sexual pleasure. But as the child grows, we start to take things away from them and make them feel, you know, guilty about pleasures. We start to make them see the human body as something they should feel guilty about. We start to make them feel interest in, 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 in enjoyment is something they should find in the negative. We start to place things on. Now, it's healthy in a society to say that, okay, a 12-year-old's, 10 year olds should not be having sex no they shouldn't that is a, a good thing because their bodies hasn't even gotten there but we give them these stigmas all through these formative years about their body about sexuality about all these things that are so negative that as we get older we have so much guilt centered around our sexuality that the child who grows into the adult is traumatized in their sexuality, traumatized in what beauty is, we begin to tell the children what beauty is as they grow up, one, two, three years old, you're beautiful, you're pretty, you're, mm, ooh, ooh, that child is not cute. We start to teach them these things, which they begin to have this guilt about beauty and sexuality and pleasure and, and things that we start to tell them to do that you're a boy so you have to do this and you're a girl and you have to do that and we take away their joys and align them based on cultures and things of that nature and we have to unravel these things we have to unravel all these things uh, there are masculine energy things and there are feminine energy things but recognize that we have both and that they can work in harmony with each other. And so if a, a, a young man or a young lady likes to dress up really nice, it is not something that we push down on them and make them feel bad about it. If, if they speak a certain way, we don't make them feel bad about it. If they uh, enjoy certain things, we don't make them feel bad about it. We encourage them to continue to explore these things uh, in a healthy way. And we have to do that for ourselves. We have to start understanding how uh, sex is not just for procreation, as with most beasts of burden on the planet, that it's something to be enjoyed. That men have to get into the, men mostly have to get into the mindset of it is not about your pleasure, but it is also about her pleasure, and, and, and vice versa in those situations as well. And that the woman uh, who've been made to feel shameful about having sex or different types of sexual acts need to be reassured that those are okay that all those years that you were told that that's not what you do or should do or culturally unfit we have to let those things go 
the more we let those go. Now, I'm not saying go out and just, you know, hoe, hoeing in the world. Just every man, woman you can get with, go get with them. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. There are, there are moralities surrounding that. But what I am saying is that you should be sexually free. But you should also be pleasure free. If you like eating a certain thing, eat that certain thing. If you like living a certain life, live that certain life. Uh, live to be happy. Live to enjoy life and be pleasured in life. And you will open that chakra. And it has to be done in a healthy way. Not violating anyone else's ability to find their own happiness. And you will begin to open and get rid of that. And never feel guilty. Regardless of what anyone says about how you live your life, what you do in your life, the decisions you make, as long as you're not disrupting or taking away anyone else's freedom to do the exact same thing, never allow anyone to make you feel guilty about it. Now, the next chakra is your power chakra, right? This is your willpower. This is that gut feeling. This is gutting it out. The baby, when it starts to develop this chakra open this chakra is during that time frame where they become courageous you know children will jump off of anything children will climb anything children walk around with no fear whatsoever until we give them fear now i know we have to teach them not to run out in the street and get hit by a car and their concept of death is not quite there yet which is why they can't work from the top down because they can't understand the transmutation of energy from one consciousness to the next level of consciousness. But we try to teach them, but we have to be able to teach them not to run in the street and give them the why at the level of understanding that they do have without teaching them to live in fear. You know, that that base chakra live is blocked by fear. And if you add the shame that we give them for every mistake that they make. You see, the shame comes from not uh, what our accusations are of them, but it comes from how we make them feel about the mistakes that they have made or uh, how they make themselves feel about the mistakes they made. But granted, these things are learned from a child. They're learned as a child from us, from other people. Just as we say racism is learned, that children aren't born racist. But they're taught racism. Children aren't born to be bullies. But there is some situation in their home. Something has happened to them in their lives that they become bullies. I know you may say, oh, that child has always been mean. But what was the environment? Realize an infant is seeing outward into the world. And whatever it is seeing is memorizing. It's becoming part of who they are. If they see yelling and screaming and violence all the time, if they see... Uh, a husband beating his wife or a wife beating her husband if they see couples always yelling at each other and putting each other's down just because they're their infant one two three four years old those things have been programming itself into the child so they will become that way and if you was in a negative uh, energy pattern while you was pregnant those things will be coming they'll become part of that child so we have to be conscious of that and how we making them respond to the world and how we make them respond to whatever they do. So when your child makes a so when children make mistakes, we can't make them feel shameful. When people make mis mistakes, we can't let their internal dialogue cause them to feel ashamed of it because then their confidence and curiosity and, and within themselves starts to diminish. Their self um, self image begins to diminish, and when that when, when a person can't look at themselves and say that they are beautiful because back in the pleasure chakra, you taught them that this is what beauty is, then the problem we will have, interruption, but it happens. So what we have to do is realize is that we have to regain that curiosity in our lives, that questioning. Then when the child starts asking why, 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 we can't make them feel ashamed of asking why. When we, we, we have to explore the world, explore ourselves, explore this universe, explore our consciousness, explore that inner universe. And we cannot make a person feel ashamed of, the, ashamed of that and don't allow yourself to feel ashamed of your curiosity, of your going out and your willpower to live your life how you want to live your life. Not allowing that, 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 that push of people that told you what beauty is 
to still be your form of beauty, to told you what pleasure is to still be your form of pleasure, to tell you what survival is to still be your form of survival. There are some people who feel as if they must have millions in order to survive because of how they, they grew into it and they can't understand how to change it back. These things are imperative because if we do not, the child will open those chakras. Which is why the child will automatically know how to give love and receive love. The child, is, it's easy for a child to be in the worst situation but still be loving. To still have fun. To still find pleasure. To still explore. A child can be in the worst, impoverished, dangerous situation. And children will play. They will have fun. They will explore. They will do all these things and they will love. It is as we grow up into adults, we begin to reason our way into not loving. We begin to take our experience of pain and guilt and shame and lose loss of love and we shut these chakras down. We will take our financial situation in comparison to someone else and we will shut these things down. We will get into a mode where we are focused solely on, play, on, on our survival that we forget that there is an entire life to live and that the soul's experience to manifest in this form of reality is to experience life and that's what we should be looking for because but because we don't our heart, heart chakra becomes blocked it slows down it spins a little bit we forget truly how to love we forget truly how to give it and receive it and if that heart chakra is filled with grief and is not open to love, we can never make that 90 degree turn into our spirit consciousness where we can deal with our throat chakra, we can deal with our third eye, we can deal with our crown chakra so that we are open to go into the next level, the next understanding, which is at the bottom of the fifth dimensional plane. We have to be able to open these base chakras first. Get out of your mindset with people running around. Oh, my third chakra, my third eye is open. My third, But you're still living in fear. Your third eye can't be open if you're still living in fear. I'm still holding on to the traumatic loss of grief in my heart from a loved one, from a spouse, from a child, from anyone that we've lost and we just don't know how to love. Your third eye is not open. It's not open. It might be spinning like, choo, 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 spin a little bit, but it's not spinning in a healthy way. It's not open. You like to say it, you have dreams, everyone has, you, DMT releases in your mind, you will have a dream. You sit and you meditate and you will see some visions. But your third eye is not open. An open third eye is a totally different beast. It's completely different from just you having your visions. It's different from people who go to their church, mosque, synagogue, and they feel like they got into the spirit and they start prophesizing about things that don't happen. How many people follow religions where there was a prophecy, the prophecy didn't happen, and then they have to retcon the prophecy and change it up to fit the current mode so that the people don't fall apart. And these were the higher ups. How many prophecies have you heard every year about how this is going to be your year? That God, that Abatullah, that Allah is going to rain down blessings on you. How many times have you seen that when people are saying that? How many times have people prophesied in your life or said that they saw something or they had a vision or a dream? And it doesn't become reality. It's not even a warning. It's nothing. Because that third eye truly ain't open. It's not open. When that third eye is open, then the reality of the universe changes. The reality of the universe changes. Your third eye being open is more akin to you truly having an understanding of the law of cause and effect. Let me end it this way. The law of cause and effect, I like to think of in the same way of leading a horse to water. You can lead the horse to water, but it doesn't mean the horse is going to drink it. You can't make him drink. You have a third eye. We can go through rituals. We can do all these things. It doesn't mean your third eye is going to be open because you still may be living in fear, gear, filled shame, gear, gear, ah, fear, guilt, shame, loss of loved ones, lies that you've told yourself about yourself, still feeling like we're not all, everything is not connected. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. We are all connected. There is no uh, empty space. Everything is connected. Without understanding these things, these hermetic laws, your third eye cannot be open. 
in this way, a simpler way to explain that is most people out there, if I told you how to balance a checkbook, you can do it. If I say you don't spend more money than you make, you understand that. But most people, either you or you know someone who does not do that. You generally spend more than you make. You are generally in debt. You are generally not able to pay all your bills to sustain a basis of survival life here in this whatever country you're in. So let me put it in whatever country you're in. You're struggling. Your credit scores are generally low. Your love life usually kind of sucks. Because you know in your love life that if you are filled with anger, animosity, fear, guilt, shame, that the love life is not going to work. You know that if you don't continue to date that man, date that woman, that it's not going to work. But you don't do it. If you don't live up to the standard of yourself and then the standard of your mate, it's not going to work. I can plant a seed, and I had this discussion earlier today. I can plant a seed, but as any good farmer, grower understands, if I plant a seed today, no, I don't expect the plant tomorrow. I don't expect the, 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 the harvest tomorrow. But I do expect the, the seed to go through its maturation point. I expect the seed to have roots break out from the seed. I expect the roots to then spread. I expect the stalk to begin to come up. I expect it to break through the ground. I expect it to continue to grow and grow and grow. So marketable increase is what I expect to see. You can't plant a seed, don't nurture it, give it life, and not see anything. And then four months later, boom, it just explodes up and it's a six foot tall plant. It doesn't happen. Nothing in nature happens that way. But man can reason their way as to why the seed hasn't grown and you need to be more patient. Why the seed hasn't grown and your expectation and anticipation is a problem and you need to be more patient. It, without marketable increase, then my nurturing, my, my, my compassion, my love, my consideration is being wasted because here's a seed that is unwilling to break free from its shell. So most people have experienced something similar to that where people are afraid to break free from their shell of being in low finances, break free from their shell of the pain they experienced from a previous relationship, break free from their shell of their fear of opening a business or going to college or moving to another country or doing anything. They, 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 they can't break free because they're still living in some form of fear, guilt, shame or grief or lies. They're still living in that disconnected mindset. So that third eye is not open. Because you're still living that way. And most of most people are allowing the traumas of their past, the lessons they learned from a parent who was being abused, lessons they learned from their own personal abuse, lessons they learned from watching a parent struggle financially. And, and, and even though they hate it, that's, that's, that's what they do. They struggle financially. Or they get so filled with the, the, the idea that I'm not going to struggle, that all they do is work. They become a lost soul and totally focus just on work and forget about life. Forget about love. They forget about adventure. They forget about creativity. And all they do is just focus on work and building. And I'm not going to struggle. I can't struggle. My mom struggled. My dad struggled. I can't struggle. I can't struggle. I'm not going to do it. My dad left my family. My dad left and I grew up without a dad. So I'm not going to leave. Even though I'm in a toxic relationship, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave. Not realizing you're doing damage to your own children. We stay in situations that are not good for us because we experience some pain in our past and, and we won't move and leave it in order to truly open ourselves up. So don't say that your third eye is open. You're still living in fear, guilt, shame, loss of heart, and loss of love. You truly want to open it, you got to understand it like a baby. That's why all the books say, come to me as a little child. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.